usually KCI and Arcbug Phoenix. It's just a question of which one is better. Better. KCI, but KCI I think is ban worthy better. So we're apparently filming now. Yeah. Let's make it an angle we like. We are live. Okay, we're there. Let's share some links. It is organized by alphabetically, so we'll be doing this alphabetically. I have 50 cards to go over, so let's uh, get in here. We got three people watching. Really? Yeah, yeah Trace. Nice. Already? We got we got Sani Wada, who is here first. Congratulations, Sani. You're our favorite today. I guess I have to go. Oh, now there's only two people. Well, we're not doing anything right now. I'm doing stuff. I'm saying hello. You, I'm, so I'm doing normally, the pre-chat. I, yeah, I'm doing this this time, so you're going to have to just talk in the yeah, camera I'm, like you I'm do. okay. Cool. I need to talk louder. Maybe Michael's going to monitor the audio, and there's a 27-second lag. Oh, we, so can, just, we can bring that up. Well, it's going to probably cr peak like crazy, so Michael, just monitor in 27 seconds how we're sounding and let us know. Because Michael, the producer, I think you're going to be way too high on that. I'm pretty sure. Okay. Well, Michael, tell us. I can get it. That, I don't know the words of that song. I'm learning all the like Fortnite dances. It's legitimately I'm learning all the Fortnite dances. It's legitimately down. Skull. I can't talk down or straight. Yeah. I have to choose one Did of you those. Already move it down. This is volume down. This means volume. Oh down. oh 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 oh. But it's oh, black. Oh, oh. Remember that. So you already moved the volume. No, down. I did not move it since he pointed down. <laughs> Oh God! You're so bad at life. Stop that! <laughs> Don't say I'm bad at life. <laughs> I'm trying to save Michael from our voices. Okay, how about now? Good. Was it too loud before, and that was your issue? He won't know because it takes thirty seconds to catch I, up. I, I understand how this works. Okay, okay. I'm not. <laughs> sounds good. Cool. It sounds good now. Okay. So condescending. <laughs> I'm going to look straight into your eyes this whole podcast. <laughs> okay. Um, it thinks we're doing this. So um, we need to go and change the stream. 2019. It's a big year. This is the year of Blade Runner. I wish outfits were as cool as sci-fi shows made them out to be for this time period. Like, yeah. we're still, like, you're just in a suit. People yeah. have been wearing what you're wearing since, like, the 1800s. MMS Earlier than that. Live. Uh, we are doing Ravnica Allegiance. Yep. Right? You, like, could wear, like, a wig with, like, a powdered wig, and it wouldn't look okay. weird based on your outfit. Set review. Yeah. Just keep scrolling. We're good. Um, MMS Live, Ravnica Allegiance, set review, public. We have to do a description notes, MMCast. YouTube. MMCast 199? Yeah. <laughs> Technically. 198. No, nah, this is 199. I just don't put the number in. It's, it was already 190. Okay. Yeah, just take the number out. Uh, Ravnica Allegiance set review. Uh, I am looking for my boys MMCast. Okay, we're sweet. We're doing great here. And GP Portland and Mythic Championship is the title of this episode right now. Well, I just changed it. Mm -hmm. Clicking on it. Ooh, I can see the chat now. Wow, there's 13 people watching. What, what the heck? What's up, everybody? Yeah, don't worry, guys. We're changing. If you just refresh your information, you'll find that it's not actually GP Portland. That's an old title, an old video. Um, Kessler on the chat mic. So then other things, we want to take this, we want to take this live streaming thing, and then we want to share the URL. Twitter, Alex and Ben are live doing their Ravnica Allegiance. Set review. Ben now. on the hype, hype, hype. Okay, 
That's tweeted. Now let's go over to Facebook and share it. Skewer the critics. Oh. Oh, we'll be talking about skewer the critics. Don't you worry. Mm. I currently don't know what any of the names of the cards are, but that never changes. Hey, Michael, can I ask you a quick favor just while we're doing this? Um, in the two minutes before we start, is there some way you can just check if we can turn the heat down a little bit? I oh, there's like... no way to modify air in this room. Really? Yeah. How is it, like, it's, like, very hot in here. It's never this hot. What's going on? You're sure? Uh, there's a heater on now in the building because it's cold outside and rainy. So, uh, uh, yeah, so there is some heat being pumped into here, but there is actually no way to have this room be changed. Got it. Open the door. Then there's, like, a lot of sound. Yeah. <laughs> that's fine. Uh, it's, it's all good. If, it's, if we can't do it, we can't do it. Yeah, this, this room specifically has the least priority as far as all the air conditioning units that get pumped into different rooms, and so it'll be effective last. If you want some water, have some. It's okay. It's okay. Um, okay, so... Uh, let me see what captive audience is. I have 50 cards on my list. Captive audience. 50 cards, eh? Uh, that is Captive Flame. Uh, we currently Captive Audience wasn't on my list, but I'll add it for you. Get us to the actual 50. That's for you, Game Box. Uh, we were on a single mic because we found out while we Brand were on winter break that uh, our microphone was... The reason we've had sound issues on our, our videos and audio for the last couple of weeks, months, is because our actual recording device was problematic. So we kept... We bought new mics. We bought new things. We bought a new Craig. This is, he looks like the old Craig, but he's 100% better. No infect. Yeah, no infect. Yeah. He's no longer infected no. by the Phyrexians. This is a Mirrodin only Craig. Yeah, clone. 100% on Metalcraft. That's it. That's it. He's got three he's artifacts here. Craig. He's now powered up. Nope. He's plus now one, up, one, up, bitch. up, up. I mean, you can't people, say that on this not, podcast. We're not recording on a real <laughs> channel yet, so. Um, we're going to get Kofefe after you guys. Anything? Kofefe? No, I have, I have I doubled up. up. Okay. You are awesome. Okay. Um, stay dry. There's a ninja samurai sword umbrella if you want to use it. It's just, big, so you can get two people under it at once. That's legit. I'll yeah. take that. Will you just, like, let the office... We are starting recording now for one hour? Yep. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right. Ready? Tell them to shout a lot. Uh, okay. We are got 22 people on the chat. Look at that. All right, chat, I have a question for you. Which card are you least excited to play with in Modern after Monday? <laughs> uh, okay, we're good, we're good, we're oh, muted. Chat, we're get here. out of your video. I don't want the video. Here we, we go. We are now recording audio. We are now recording video. Uh, we're streaming. We're good. Um, Alex, you ready? Uh, I'm ready. Oh, what's awful? Craig is lying. Do you think there will be any bans during the BNR Monday? Oh, we'll talk about that on the episode. Yeah, don't yeah, you yeah. worry. Um, we have uh, a ton I have of so cards. many drinks. I am I am hydrated. I got some a medicine ball here. This is a uh, hot. Why am I talking to that for me explaining? We have have we started recording? I just clicked record. Oh, cool. This is the episode. You're in the pre-record still. Though. Okay, so the I was just reminding you because. Oh yeah, yeah. So this is a medicine ball, which is a steamed lemonade, peach, and peppermint tea with honey. Mm. Uh, keeps that throat nice and not sore. Um, I got an iced coffee, Trenta. This doesn't exist in other countries. Mm. The best, the, mo the happiest moment of me getting back from Hong Kong after 14 days is getting a Trenta iced coffee with extra ice. Because you know what also doesn't exist in other countries? Extra ice. Yeah. They think extra ice is normal ice, and they think normal ice is not ice. You're like, can I have an ice water? And they're like, here's warm water. <laughs> it's the worst. And then these are water bottles. They're just water in here. I have one water. I don't know what this is. This is not mine. Oh, I thought it was yours. <laughs> um, this could go away. Um, all right. It's so swell. The things we're doing for quickly on the pre-show before you do your intro. Sure. Uh, we have fifty cards. You say. Mm -hmm. So unless it's like a key card, I think we can limit ourselves for like twenty-five seconds on the on the quick commons because otherwise we're gonna be here for two hours. We can talk crap about the cards that we think are bad that are on this list, and we can just say they're bad, and we can move on. How okay. about we both have it, this card is bad veto rights for the episode. Okay, so we can both veto the other one to stop talking about a card. Yeah. But we each get two instances during the show to veto the veto and be like, no, we are talking about yeah, this card. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, great. We have unlimited veto power, but we only have two instances of veto veto power. Veto veto. Yeah. Double veto. <laughs> Double veto. <laughs> we actually know a guy named Veto. Uh, okay. He so could be that's, in the chat. He could be listening. So that's the thing. He has Otherwise, a uh, Fast and Furious podcast. Actually, you guys should all listen to it. It's fun. I guess that. Yeah, yeah. It's great. Um, 
Okay, so otherwise, let's get into the show. We'll talk some man restricted and some things, yep. and we were in Hong Kong. All right. Music, 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 music. And welcome back to Masters of Modern. I'm your host, Alex Kessler, here with my co host, Ben Bateman. What's up, everybody? Uh, we're here. I'm turning slightly sideways. We're sitting very close, and I'm talking to this microphone. Yeah, I'm looking uh, into his. They're like, <laughs> they're not blue eyes, they're like they're... slightly gray. Oh, wow. Yeah. I have blue eyes. I must be doing something wrong. No, they're gray. They're gray eyes. <laughs> so um, what's going on? Why are we sitting so close to each other and making jokes about longingly looking into each other's eyes? And uh, the tramp? So, so for those who have been complaining about the audio on our podcast for the last month and a half, uh, we have heard your calls and have been trying every single episode to try and fix it. We bought new microphones. We brought new microphone holders. We brought these toner things that have an actual name, but they're made by the brand toner. They're preamps. Preamps. And none of that worked, and it has come down to us realizing that our actual main recorder only has one remaining port that actually works on it. So today, we are using one microphone, because we figured it out this morning, now that we're back from Hong Kong, to record this episode like this. And for people on the audio feed, or the video feed, you can see that we're very close to each other, talking into one microphone, like a like the Beatles. Yeah, so those of you that are listening to this on audio, and maybe you've noticed there's been some weird inconsistencies with the audio for a little while, um, that's why we were testing a lot of stuff out. This episode in particular is probably picking up some room, but I think it's doable and you're not gonna get the weird plosives or the like extra bassy thing that was happening. Mm -hmm. And hopefully we will be, I mean, not hopefully, we, you guys support a Patreon, so we have a little bit of money to buy a brand new one of these things. Yep, and that's why the Patreon that exists. For to next duct week. tape things together to make this podcast work. We're also, my, the toy company that I own is rebuilding the office spaces that we have, and so this will become more of a soundproofed studio space slash Ben's office. Um, he's sacrificing his office for the podcast. Yes, I am. Uh, so that'll be happening as well. So, But that's longer term to get audio as good as possible. In the short term, we will be buying a new Zoom. And if you guys are hearing us on the stream, obviously it's not the audio. It's this, that's your phone. That's my phone. Picking this it thing up. right here. But uh, yeah, so that's the deal. Uh, this is the Masters of Modern. We talk about modern on this show. Today we are doing a Ravnica Allegiance set review. So all of the things that we expect to affect modern, uh, we'll be talking about here before the pre-release. Um, we just got back from Hong Kong for two friggin' weeks. Too long. It was a really long trip. It was trip. too long. Did you like? I'm looking wistfully off in the distance. <laughs> I like the loved war. it. I loved it, and I like was by the time I came home, I was like dying. And I've been gone for the two weeks before Hong Kong, also. Well, that's the longest you've been out of Los Angeles since you moved here the second time. Yes. Right. Oh yeah. yeah. I was gone for other than four nights. I was gone from LA for a month, and it was too much. Yeah. Um, Hong Kong is awesome, but well, that's so so I. For people on the podcast, and we can go, this this is taking too long, so we'll go through this quickly, but I go to Hong Kong relatively often, and, and people are like, oh, is it awesome? It's so cool. I mean, it is really cool. It's, my, it's probably my second favorite city on the planet, but on the other hand, when I go, it's relatively miserable because I'm going there to work. I'm in a showroom the whole time. Uh, the only way you survive through the jet lag and work schedule is like drinking a little bit every night, and then you get sick because you've been drinking every night, and it's just bad uh, news all around. Uh, having been there made it infinitely better. We just jammed Magic Games. Uh, Played a lot of Highlander. The international toy rep community is now very judgy of us because they caught us playing Magic in the bar upstairs at the hotel, and so now uh, they're <laughs> we, planning a New York Toy Fair meetup, and they are making sure that there is space for us to play Magic there. They called but, it World of Warcraft. But they refer to it as World of Warcraft because <laughs> they're a bunch of trolls. Uh, we, like, got made fun of a lot because there's, like, a super swanky bar at the top of the hotel we were staying at that, like, the whole industry goes and, like, hangs out at. And this one night, we brought up our cards. Well, we brought was, up, like, for the first six nights we'd play, but we got there early, so no one was there. And then people started showing up, and we didn't realize it. So we showed up, and then the bar was, like, filled with toy industry people that were all, like, not, which is fascinating. They weren't ex as accepting as you'd think of a Magic the Gathering player. And then <coughs> Ben shows up with a entire grimoire a filled literal, with a, a, literal, literal a little grimoire that filled with Magic cards. And I show up with my uh, Game of Thrones lunchbox filled with a, a Highlander roulette wheel and... It was, uh, we got made fun of a lot. Yeah. So that's, that happened. Felt like high school. Yeah. It was, <laughs> and they were just like such like bullies. Yeah. They were all like, but they were they all were like, nice about it. I mean, I think, I think they appreciated us more. I think, I think, especially because you come off very flashy, yeah. it, like having that as a character flaw made us endearing to them to they, a certain extent. They were all like, they were all like, uh, really 
like in, like Scandinavians in their mid fifties that enjoy drinking. And so it was just like <laughs> a lot of like international people making fun of us. Yeah, uh, but it was fun. It was fun. We made an impact. Nice guys. We, uh, <laughs> we had a great time. All right. So today we're talking about two things. We're talking about uh, mostly we're doing our set review for the new set, uh, Ravnica Allegiance, uh, which has most of my favorite guilds in it. Actually, all of the guilds that I think I would associate with are in this set, which are all Azorius. Your Orzov and Simic, like Sim, uh, uh, is it's the only one missing? I yeah, think of like the five guilds that I like, four guilds I like really probably love. One of them is not in the set. Yeah, that's like literally. I, I think I'm in the same boat. Is yeah. this my favorite? I'm a big fan of Simic. Uh, I mean, for modern, it's a little different, but just in general, the guilds that I like. Like, I think if you go to the Planeswalker website, my Planeswalker page is a Simic page. Like oh, from no, is, sorry, RTR yeah. back in the day, you got to choose which guild you're on, and then it's locked in forever. So is I'm it Simic. Was in the first set? Sorry, I was getting. My yeah, is it's not in this one. Um, yes, so that's what we're doing today. Um, we're gonna get into a full set review just because we don't have that much time. But the first thing we're gonna do before we fully jump into that, a uh, couple shout outs. Number one, check out the Command Zone and Game Nights, both run by Jimmy Wong, Josh Lee Kwai, um, longtime supporters and partners of us in yes. this podcasting endeavor that we do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, subscribe to this channel if you're watching this on YouTube right now. Uh, you can subscribe to it, it's like a big subscribe, thing. Subscribe, like if you're watching this video and it's not live, also comment because, like, as much interaction as you ha have on the YouTube channel, the better that YouTube's analytics supports us. So we appreciate it a great deal. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and then the last like quick shout out I'll give now is that we have a Patreon, patreon.com slash the MMcast. Um, that's like how we're gonna buy a new Zoom is we because we have a, a little bit of money that we've saved for a long time on the Patreon. Mm -hmm. uh, and if we ever are gonna continue to improve the show, that's what we need to do to do it. So thank you guys for supporting us. We are getting close to episode 200. And without further ado, I suggest actually do we're gonna talk about the bannings first. Let's talk about the bannings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so here's the deal. There are two real culprits in modern that if you're not there's three cards that if you're not playing one of the three, then you're not doing it correctly, and that's Noble Hierarch, uh, Faithless Looting, and Ancient Stories. Like if you're not playing one of those three cards right now in modern, you're making a mistake. Uh, and so I think when they look at cards to ban, they're going to look kind of in that space. People are talking about Mox Opal, but I think Mox Opal will dodge this one once again. Like, I don't think Affinity is, like, the decks that are playing with it aren't as problematic as the decks that are using Ancient Stirrings. Like, I think between the two, that's the more problematic card in these decks. That's giving them consistency and the ability to kind of find the answers they need to be as good as they are. Um, and... That's currently my pick that if they were to ban a card, it's Ancient Stirrings. Uh, I think Faithless Looting does a lot of good for the format with the bad that it's doing versus Ancient Stirrings where the decks that use it won't go away without it, but they will lose the consistency that they have allowing decks to be able to fight them a little bit better than they currently can. It's hard to imagine the decks that utilize Phoenix continuing to exist without Faithless Looting. It's uh, I don't know if that's true. Like, you'd have to they don't really have clever. them in Standard, and it's still one of the best decks in Standard. Like, there are a lot of ways to get Phoenix into your graveyard. But something being good in Standard is different than something being good in Modern. I mean, like, you could still Thought Scour, and there are other things you can do. You I can... would I would guarantee that if Faithless Looting didn't exist, Arclight Phoenix decks would still be a major part of the format. Oh, by the way, Arclight Phoenix is the best deck in the format. What up? I guess second best KCI is better. But, like, KCI is going away. <laughs> So there will definitely be bannings. I mean, I think there's also an interesting conversation that people were talking about. Okay, so bannings are one option, but then will we see any unbannings? So I think I think I've barked up the street now every single time this yeah. happens, and I would love and hope that they finally just unban Stoneforge Mystic. I think it's time. I think it does exactly what you want against some of the decks in the format to slow them down from a like wide aggressive standpoint, but also it's just not that good compared to other things. So I don't think it would be in any way too powerful for the more Matt if it existed. I also think that um, I've seen a lot of people talk about Splinter Twin being a card that they might unban. I read and, a whole article about it. Yeah. yeah. Really like an interesting conversation. Like does having the ability to do that um, on turn four make the format actually more balanced? And they always previously have unbanned two cards at once. And I could see them banning Ancient Stirrings. I would like put banning Ancient Stirrings at a 75% banning Faithless Looting alongside of it at a 30%, banning Mox Opal at 20%, and I would put Unbanning Stoneforge Mystic at a 50% and Splinter Twin at a 30%. But I think they could do all of those things. Interesting. I mean, I, I, I'm I definitely somebody who thinks Stoneforge Mystic would be fine. I'm pretty sure if you were to unban Splinter Twin, in very short order, it would just become the best deck in the format again, and people would just be playing blue-red control decks with I don't a combo. Know if, I don't know if that's true, though, because I think like Splinter Twin is not the best matchup against Arclight Phoenix decks. Like, 
they, those can run a bunch of interaction that stops you that just turns on Arclight Phoenixes and they have to like deal with these in like blue red has a lot of trouble dealing with a flying three two and like their cards are just like and faith is looting now exists in the format so you now have 12 good removal spells that deal with the combo i think like it's not as good as it would have been i think i think do we totally think that arc like phoenix decks wouldn't just play splinter twin and you wouldn't just get splinter twin arc like phoenix hybrids arc like the 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 splinter twin cards do not work well with the arc like phoenix because you need yeah, yeah, yeah like it's not that they can't like i think they there will be decks that do that and that's yeah. definitely a thing that will happen but i also think that like they're not necessarily yeah the it's best a, fit with each it's other. not the same way you can just mash in i get you yeah i mean birthing pod's coming back too which is going to be dope i'm excited for that not the actual card but there's but there's in our a set we'll talk clone. about it yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. so um, those are those are our quick thoughts um we will give you guys a full when it happens next week we'll talk about it yeah i mean and next week is our 200th show that's an actual thing we are doing episode 200 of the mm cast on next week's show and that could possibly be a gigantic unbanning or banning episode yeah. to discuss. So it could be a big one. Yeah, so yeah. be sure to tune in next week. Um, let's get into it. Let's All right, start. we're going to do it alphabetically. Okay. So our first card is Absorb. This is blue, blue, white. Counter target spell you gain through life instant. I think this, this is, is going to be reprint. good. It's a reprint into Modern. It's from uh, Invasion originally. When it was in Invasion, it was a major staple of the format. Huge. It was like one of the major control cards. Um, how do you think this compares to classic three mana counter spells? The ones that have a different function. So whether it's a scry one, exile a spell, counter all other spells. I don't think the scry's going to see play. You think, okay, you just don't think it's good? I think a three mana counter spell doesn't see play in modern. Interesting. Um, I would be a little bit on the fence about this. I think that the blue white and the Jeskai deck sometimes have a tendency. Jeskai more can catch up because of, because of uh, Helix. But I think the straight blue white decks have a tendency sometimes to not quite get there fast enough run out of cards or, or run out of interactive cards early against the deck that's fast. And I think it's possible that Absorb is what helps them catch up. So in the way oh, that... Like, Absorb doesn't help you not run out of cards. I'm saying running, don't know, yeah. running out of cards early that interact and help you catch up before you lose to an aggressive deck. Sure. So... I, yeah, so, three mana, like all those decks have all the things that are problematic into play before turn three. And like, if you're trying to stop your opponent later, like maybe a hard counter at three mana that gains you through life is there, and I might totally be wrong, and I can see maybe one of Zindex at some points, but I just don't see the scene play. It's also conceivable that it's also conceivable that this could be a two of sideboard card in blue white decks against Burn. Sure. Because um, what what is a better thing that blue white's going to do against a super aggressive deck playing lots and lots of light? Isn't there like a gain seven life for one white? Doesn't that card exist? Yeah, but that's they don't want to play that. They want to counter things. They want to counter your lightning bolt and gain three. That's what they were I would doing. against Burn, I would much rather play one one white mana, gain seven life, that then I have a Snapcaster Mage that can rebuy it later, than counter one bolt and gain three life. Just think about it. how devastating it is to a burn deck, and granted burn's not big right now, but how devastating it is against a deck that wants to burn you out when you play Collective Brutality with just Drain Gain and Steal a Card, which is literally what countering a burn spell and gaining three life is. It's it, they almost can't yeah, win but, three. But then my seven for three mana, you get six life off of that interaction. For one mana, I get seven life. And then I have a card in my graveyard to then flash back to get an additional seven life, which is five of their burn spells. I veto this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> uh, next is Angel of Grace. White, white, three. Angel, creature, flash, flying. When Angel of Grace enters the battlefield until end of turn, damage that would reduce your life total to less than one reduces it to one instead. Exile Angel of Grace from your graveyard. Your life total becomes dead. So this is a 5-4 flash for 5 that you play in response to lethal. You go to 1, so it's got the Fortune Thief, Alley from Cairo effect, Angel's Grace effect. Um, and it has this cool graveyard bonus that instant speed you can get yourself back to 10 if you're in, in, in death range. I mean, 5 mana for a 5-4 flyer with flash is solid, except for the fact that, like, think about it, like, Archangel Avison, really powerful and standard, never saw any play in modern, not even close. Like, you think about, isn't there, isn't there one right now in standard, uh, what's it called? Um, Lyra? Now it doesn't have flash, but, like, it's hard. In white, it is difficult for that, to, for that spot to actually... Well, I mean, there's two parts of this. The fact that you can flash it back to gain 10 life is just, like, a random nice effect that's attached to it. The other thing is, like, it combos with stuff. Like, Angel's Grace sees play for a reason, and being able to, like, flash this in... As not... Like, if you have the mana yeah. and then ad nauseum, is something that's interesting to uh, decline this. Yeah. Um, but it, remember, it's when it enters the battlefield. So you have Correct. to have the five mana open to play it in response right, right, to the right. trigger. But the fact that it has flash is interesting. Yeah, so, yeah. so you untap, you know, you lose the game, trigger goes on the stack or whatever. 
Um, but it's just life total, right? It's not if you would lose the game, you don't lose the game. Correct. It's just life total. So you can't counter a pack trigger or yeah. something. Yeah. Cool card. I just don't think I'll see play in modern. Cool. Awaken the erstwhile. Three black black. Each player discards all cards in their hand, then creates that many two two black zombie creature tokens. This card's interesting. Someone um, someone brought up just like, oh, another card in dredge. I think it's too expensive. By the time you get to five mana in almost any deck in modern, mm -hmm. the likelihood of you having enough cards in your hand at that point to get a bunch of zombies and your opponent not having any cards in their hand just seems like a fun pipe dream, but unlikely. You'd have to combo yeah. this with something else really good. Yep. I, I think the issue with this card in general is that the decks that want to get stuff into their graveyard that would take advantage of discarding their hand do it much quicker than five mana gets them to do it. Yeah. And so it doesn't really do anything for them. Haymakers, like like big haymakers like that, that are supposed to get a big payoff, need to they need to chain with another card, and they need to cost like three or less. Four right. or less, but three really. Right, right, right. Agreed. Uh, Bedeck and Bedazzle. Uh, it's a, one of the rare hybrid split cards. So it's a hybrid black-red, hybrid black-red. Target creature gets plus three, minus three until end of turn. And then four black-red, uh, just... Both sides are instants. Destroy target non-basic land, but Dazzle does two damage to target opponent or planeswalker. So the front half is a limited removal spell that's strong. You could play it in standard. People probably will play it in standard. Yeah, I think the two things that pay attention to all these cards are A, Cascade goes around these. So in decks like Living End, this is a card that is a optional removal spell, and this is in the colors that Living End plays. So I think all of the Grixis colored... Um, split cards are something to look at as does this offer a removal spell that Living End can take advantage of since they can now play this and get around cards and then on top of that you have the versatility of these cards and some of the later ones we'll talk about are more about the versatility so I think there's there's interesting things that this does for that reason otherwise I don't think this sees play anywhere else I think there's better removal spells other than in decks that are trying to cascade into spells yeah I mean the backside bedazzle six mana to destroy a land and get some damage it's fine but this card will be much better as like this is a first pick and limited I think oh yeah I, I, like I don't think the dazzle side sees any play in modern ever no no but I think I, I, well I think that's not totally true if you're playing this in deck already you're this will get cast once in a while because it exists and, but... and what you just said in like a deck like living end if you're trying to play with mana costs like the fact that the, the converted mana cost on this card technically is eight but you can is, cast as a two drop is significant right that, that's clever um now we're moving on to another bed card which is interesting uh and this is bedevil this mm -hmm. is black black red destroy target artifact creature or planeswalker at instant speed heroes downfall has seen modern play yeah is close to being a real card it's expensive and it doesn't deal with everything you need to does getting rid of artifacts in this format make it worth playing and i think it does i think be able to have this against the kci deck makes it worth it that like there's just enough artifacts out there that having that extra piece of removal now i think this is similar to how um it is attempting to reconnect stream resumed we're back cool um so okay ask yourself this question the devil yeah will cory burkhart play this ever over a Colagon's command given the opportunity ever i think so you think so yeah. you think because it can just take out a planeswalker it and and it can just take out a creature it's not damage based right like, like there, there are formats where where faith is looting not faith is looting uh Colgan's command doesn't answer everything you need to answer now i don't think you play i think you do like three two or four Colgan's command in one of these but i don't think as i said like those decks are looking for terminates like that deck plays terminate i'd play this over a terminate more than i played over a call when command. you're when you're like snap castering like i just think the three is such a significant difference than a two yeah I, but how many things like, especially now, like, Teferi, this kills Teferi, Kalkin's Command doesn't. My belief is that this will see a play as a one-of for a while in Grixis decks. Um, and Jund. And Jund. And maybe even, maybe even Pyromancer people yeah. play it. But I think, like, a one-of is where people will try it. Well, yeah, I think, it's, I think it's a, a Maelstrom Pulse competitor, not a K-Command competitor. And I think it's a Terminate competitor. I think I would go up a mana to be able to destroy artifacts in the right format. You know, I mean, the artifact is the significant part. It's like you're just combining cards that already see a bunch of play, so... Like, Destroy Target Creature for Black Red is a card that has seen a ton of play in Modern. And I think playing one extra mana to be able to answer the other two major threats of the format is worth it. Yeah. Um, Benthic Biomancer. One what blue. Merfolk Wizard Mutant. Uh, adapt one blue for adapt one you play a blue and a colorless and then whenever one or more plus one plus one counters are put on benefic biomancer draw a card then discard a card so i like this card um here's the problem with this card unless you're playing this in some totally new deck like a different kind of deck and i thought about this too you know we can we'll talk about it a little later there's like a cynic split card that's kind of interesting but merfolk and modern like can't really 
See, I disagree. I, a lot of the people that are really good at Merfolk online are excited about this card. Really? Because it's a, Merfolk likes one drops. I mean, and, and it is always kind of looking for a good Marf, Merfolk one drop that might be better than the cards they're playing. And this lets them late game draw into better cards when they need to. Like it does kind of two things that they kind of need. And so like, it's gonna get pumped. Like uh, uh, Merfolk is the one deck that if you can have a one, one for one and play on turn one, like it doesn't matter because it's just gonna get bigger than like other things that don't want flying men or whatever. So, and we're gonna talk about one flying man later on in this episode. I mean, here's what I'll say about this card. So um, there's pros and cons, right? Mm -hmm. the, like I, I have played a handful of, like I played a good decent amount of modern Merfolk, played against a lot of modern Merfolk. And I also have a Merfolk deck in Highlander that really, if it's working, wants to function similarly to the modern deck. It wants to play a good one drop. It wants to play Lord on two. It wants to play Master of Waves on four. It wants to play Vile on one, right? right. It's like, so I've, I've sort of understand it. And I played this against you in Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. I had it proxied up just to try it. And it's pretty good, but it's not disruptive, which is what you want your one drop in that deck to be. You want the curse catcher. Like you ultimately want to be able to slow them down. Sure. The mana investment that it's going to take you to loot and get this to two power is okay. But unless I think, you I do think that, that yeah. it's just a one one for one. I think it's the second best one drop Merfolk has access to. That's a creature. Like obviously, I guess third yeah. best if you include Aether Vile. And I think that adapt one for this and, and also being able to get counters in the blue green versions of the deck that are playing the guy that whenever a Merfolk enters play, you get to put a counter on any Merfolk, has combo potential to be able to draw into better cards. Yeah, now if you're playing it exactly, but that's that's like that starts to be a different Merfolk deck. And that's a cool idea. Well but blue green Merfolk is one of the main decks in the format. Yeah, but I mean it was. I'm sorry, one of the main versions of Merfolk in the format. Yeah. I don't it's not a new deck. That is a deck that exists. It's not good right now. I like this card. I just don't think it's gonna have much of an impact. Um but I do think I mean I do think that its interaction with other counter decks, but like other ways to put counters on it, like that's really interesting. Like you could you could definitely do something really cool with this card as a one drop if you had lots of ways. Like if you were like for instance playing like a metallic mimic uh, what's his name? The the one you were just talking about, the one one green merfolk for yeah. two. If you're playing metallic mimic and that guy and this guy, and you're kind of going for a little bit different of a style of merfolk like deck, taking advantage of plus one plus one counters in some way. Then I think this guy's an absolute house as a one drop. Right, but right, that's right. a different deck. So, um, all right, this is your your boy. Biomancer's familiar. Blue green mutant two two. <laughs> Activate abilities of creatures you control cost two less to activate. This effect can't reduce the amount of mana on ability cost to activate to less than one mana. The next time target creature adapts this turn, it adapts as though it had no plus one, plus one counters on it. And that's for, for a tap, and, yeah. it's, and it's a two-two creature for this. So I think the second ability is like not a thing that I'm paying attention to. Yeah, like it, it maybe adapt does something, but that, I think the front half of being able to collect a company for a training grounds, like you've tried making training grounds work a lot yeah and this is a creature training grounds and one of the problems with training grounds is that it's bad when it's bad and it's bad at multiples where i would play a two two for two is fine like having any ability that is almost good on an enchantment but putting on a creature often can make it good enough oh definitely and and like what's cool about this card and what's cool about training grounds is that there's enough cards now that you haven't thought of playing in modern because of how expensive their activated abilities are like just cards that exist mm -hmm. a couple that come to mind right off the bat that i've looked at for a long time are Azermage, two one for two that has a draw draw a card for four three and one that if you have a training grounds or this you're now you can instant speed draw cards for two and even more there's a two one from m19 for blue blue three that has or sorry for blue blue three that has draw two cards on it mm -hmm. which means that if you have training grounds and this you can be drawing two cards for two mana mm -hmm. um so there's there's cool stuff there that you could do um i also think there's like weird synergies and interactions with those cards and like Grand Architect where you're trying to generate extra mana and that mana is getting sunk into your abilities to draw more cards. So I don't know how good it necessarily is, but... I mean, the fact that you can tutor for this all as well also off of like all of the playable tutors in Modern, which are all the creature ones, is like somewhat important to pay attention to. And I think there are in the future or now cards that get printed that combo with this efficiently enough that it becomes an interesting card to pay attention to. Yeah, I mean, I think it's cool. I, you obviously, I got excited about it. Um, next is Captive Audience. The, the the chat added this last minute to the feed. It got okay, us the 50 fair. cards. It's five red black enchantment. Captive Audience enters the battlefield under the control of an opponent of your choice. At the beginning of their upkeep, they choose one that hasn't been chosen. Their, their life total becomes four. They discard their hand. 
each opponent creates five two two black zombie creature tokens. If so, not for the chat's enthusiasm, I would veto this card because I don't understand how we're talking about it. Because it costs seven, this will never see a lick of modern play. If we could cheat this into play somehow, if we figure out a way to cheat this into play, it does a lot. Like, <laughs> you, if the day you figure out a way to cheat uh, seven drop enchantments into play in modern, <laughs> is it, um, nominations is legal, right? <laughs> uh, you can play like an enduring ideal deck, and this is like one of your enduring ideal targets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's fair. Yeah, I'm into it. The right. card is next, sweet. Next card. <laughs> Uh, this one is, uh, another one of the split cards is the uncommon, uh, Rakdos one. It's Carnival and Carnage. Uh, Carnival does one damage to target creature or planeswalker and one damage to that permanence controller. Carnage is two black red. Uh, Carnage deals three damage to target opponent. That player discards two cards. So there's like a slightly worse, um, uh, 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 blighting. And then a, uh, weird removal spell that's like a gut shot, but can people blend up black and red that also does damage to the opponent. So... Has like a little bit of versatility to it. How good is a Gutshot right now? Pretty good. Gutshot's strong right now. I mean, Humans has a bunch of X1s. Mm -hmm. Humans plays uh, Fourth Bridge Prowler literally as a mirror card in their sideboard to take out other X1s that are humans. Correct? Right. So you have that. You've got like def definitely like X1s, like Hierarch is everywhere. Um, so, so the the one damage to a creature that then just does a an extra damage to the creature's controller is like not the worst side. Like it, it's playable, and then like lightning has always been fine. Yeah. Um, spirits. A lot of the spirits are X ones. Yeah. yeah. I, so I think I think this card has a chance. Once again, it's a card to be looking at more in decks like Living End that are taking place. Like the fact that you can play this in Living End as a pretty decent removal spell that keeps you alive long enough, but then also doesn't cascade into things so you can keep your kind of combo going is interesting i think that's yeah i mean I, there's all of those split cards are going to have the same are going to have the same function which is that they, at, at, at a base level they are meant to be considered in living end <laughs> and that deck could get a huge shot in the arm from this yeah set. um cinder vines red green enchantment whenever an opponent casts a non-creature spell cinder vines deals one damage to that player you can sacrifice it for one destroy target artifact or enchantment and it deals two damage to that permanence controller i really like this card yeah. now in modern it's harder for me to imagine but what i did do in modern i took to a gp last year a deck that was trying to take advantage of lots of like whenever you cast a non-creature spell x thing happens right so like if that was that whole yeah life from the loan that was when you jab. did it what that was when you did it yeah. But, like, my point is, the, the whole premise of that deck was finding repeatable sources of damage that weren't attacking, mm -hmm. right? And so this card functions in the same space as that, where you basically have it as kind of like a... It's kind of like a destructive revelry you can just have on the battlefield, but then it also might get you incidentally three to five more damage in the game. I think this card's insane. I, like, how many decks kind of just scoop to this? Like, Casey, I can't beat this card... Arc like Phoenix decks have a lot of trouble with this card. Yeah. Like, even Affinity has problems with it. Because, like, uh, there's a bunch of decks that just are, like, a good artifact and or enchantment. Like, a good disenchant is decent against. And then you add the fact that this also just, like, wrecks Storm. Oh, like, okay. it's not non-creature. It's it's not, like, instance of sorcery. It's non-creature. I mean, this this format right now has become a high-velocity spell-driven format. Right. You definitely even have... Like Dredge can't beat this card. You definitely have Spirits, and you definitely have Humans, and you have, these, like, some very creature-driven decks. Right. But half the format is driven by decks that are trying to play two to three spells on a turn. Right. So, like, that side of it is insane. Probably a very, very, very good sideboard card. Like, think about, like, a burn deck that would otherwise want to have Revelry in their sideboard... How much better this is for them to just have. In the I think you do like a two two split with this card in Revelry because sometimes just like a two mana instant destroy an artifact is what you need, especially yeah. against like decks like Affinity. But like you know, from a racing perspective, but most of the time this card, you know, I've talked on this podcast a lot about how, and every time we do a sideboard episode, we talk about it. Like the more effort each card in your sideboard can do i'm willing to lose a little bit of specific power to gain a lot more versatility out of sideboard cards and this is exactly what this card is doing a lot of our highlander decks that we build end up being inspired by modern decks we try to pour over ideas mm -hmm. and but the power level obviously is higher because it's closer to legacy so i always i always look at a card and if i'm willing to put it into a deck in highlander then i'm like okay this card's got to be mm -hmm. probably good enough and this went right into my jun deck that was doing that and this is so weirdly versatile like it attacks different things in the format that this is main deckable I think in modern. I like I think I think you could just play one of these in your main deck and you're just sometimes gonna get people like Storm on game one by yep. like having it in play. Um next, depose and deploy. Uh tap target creature, draw a card instant for a blue white hybrid one, and then deploy is two white blue instant, create two one one color stop to artifact creature tokens with flying, then you gain one life for each creature you control. This is one of my favorites of the split cards. I think the back half of this card is deceptively powerful. 
The front half is obviously just like an ice. It's like a, it's like a, it's not quite ice, but it has the same tempo of ability that ice has. I think, I think an instant speed, it almost is ice. It is ice. No, because ice. Oh, you can untap with ice. It tap or untap target permanent because you can tap a land. Oh, you can tap you a land. Can tap okay. a, you can tap a land. Uh, uh, but deploy like an instant speed 2-2 two, two flyer that gains you like three life yeah. is like a card that's almost playable on its own. Not to mention that this has the ability to like dispo- depose earlier, to stall them out from an attack, then snap back the despite. Like there's a lot of different versatility in this card. I think it's really good. Well, also the back half, the most important thing to remember is that it's not just you're gaining life for the two creatures. You're no, gaining it's, life for all your creatures. Right, all your creatures. So if you, if you lingering souls on three, right, and then you play this the next turn in some sort of Esper thing, four mana gain four to like probably block and kill whatever they're attacking with, or just set up your next turn, mm-hmm. you're gonna win the race. And the front half of this, like stall out and like tempos, but it's on turn two before you cast your lingering souls. Like it's good. It, this is almost a whatever deploy is plus a cycle card, and like uh, I, I'm totally in. Anytime, yeah, exactly. Anytime that a card in your hand for two mana or less can be played for an ability and draw you a card, it's probably gonna have a home if it has some utility, some yeah. function. And, and the fact that the the utility of this card is gain a lot of life and get a threat onto the play is like, I think worth the effort to do it. I mean, just like- uh, And there are artifacts too. So like there's even additional support on the fact that you now have two artifact creatures in if play. If you just imagine playing against humans or mm-hmm. another deck that's aggressive and, and like really doing their thing and they play like Champion of the Parish on turn one and they play like, I don't know, like Freebooter on turn two and take the thing that you wanted to do, but they leave this in your hand. Just your ability when they attack on their next turn to tap down that champion that's now inevitably like a 3-3 three, three or a 4-4 four, four, probably gives you the tempo advantage to get yourself back in the game. Like, and it has two options. I think it's a strong card. I like it a lot. Um, people in the chat are talking about Cinder Vines right now, and they're talking about... It, this is a card that won't be worth any money, probably. It'll be... No. At, it, at most, someone plays it a lot right away, and it goes to $10, but it'll immediately drop down to 1. Look at Graph Digger's Cage's price in, mod, in Standard, and that's get, like a really good, comparable card to Cinder Vines as far as value. You get foils of Cinder Vines for a couple bucks? I would pick those up. You could buy... Yeah. yeah I'd buy uh, 10 of those. Next card is Deputy of Detention. One blue, white. The Dalkin Wizard. It's a 1-3. When it enters the battlefield, exile target non-land permanent and opponent controls, and all other non-land permanents that player controls the same name uh, as the permanent until deputy of detention leaves the battlefield so one three wizard detention sphere creature um it's not a human it's a wizard there are wizards decks well not it's, even just wizards deck. like there are there are collected company decks that just will play cards like this like i think this is a yeah. fine like a bant company deck loves this card and also and also the fact that like while uh, old pod decks, we'll get into like the new version of pod that will probably exist, and, and, and Court of Calling decks would play cards like Fiend Hunter or like the uh, the other one, Banisher Priest sometimes. Right. Just because it's a it's a durable answer. This is even better because then you can get rid of all of the Pyromancer tokens right. or things like that. The biggest can... limit that this has is those decks are probably rug, based on what the new pod creature is, and this is blue white, which is not really in that space. I mean the the Sahili Cobra deck is four color, and it's playing it without without like it's playing it with just like green tutors and like birds and stuff sure. so they could be a four color version easy um domri chaos bring it two red green planeswalker domri plus one add green or red mana to your mana pool that creature gains riot which means it either has a choice of having haste or into the battlefield with a plus one plus one counter uh you can look at the top four cards of your library and put uh up to two creature cards from among them into your hand and then the rest go on the bottom uh and or you get an emblem at the beginning of each and step, create a 4-4 red and green breeze token with trample. Um, comes down at five for four. Um, Interesting card. Um, I, we talked about it a little before the show. Mm-hmm. I don't see it having much of an impact, but I like it a little better than three mana Domri. Three mana Domri is three mana, uh, and that card saw a ton of play. This card makes is kind of three mana in the same way that Teferi is also kind of three mana in the sense that it makes mana when it comes into play that replaces itself. Um, I think that the ability to give riot to creatures is really good. That's the more relevant one. I think the ability to hit two creatures off of this is really difficult. Like I whiff regularly enough on collected company. Imagine getting only four cards versus seven. Um, it does come down with a hefty amount of loyalty. So that's, that's, one of the big ones. that's one of the big ones for me on it. The problem with that though is like, so take the example of Narset, which like six loyalty it comes down with. Yeah. Like Narset, think- was, Narset was an equally powerful card. Like it had like good abilities on it and I- it, I think this does more than Narset from an aggressive standpoint. I think the problem with this card, though, is that just, like, the only deck that would want to play a four-drop Planeswalker is Jund, and this is bad in Jund. 
it's not as good as like the good Chandra or like because you're not playing creatures in that deck. Yeah. Like the, no one, no no creature decks are looking for a four mana planeswalker. Yeah. I agree. Um, Davin Grand Arbiter, one blue white, uh, legendary planeswalker. Davin, uh, three loyalty plus one until end of turn. Whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to a player, put a loyalty or loyalty counter on Davin Grand Arbiter. Minus one, create a plus one plus one counter, uh, colorless slapter artifact creature token with flying and game one life. And the minus seven, look at the top ten cards of your library, put three of them into your hand, and the rest on the bottom of your library in random order. Um, this is a pretty good bitter blossom uh, imitation. It also is blue white versus black, which means that decks that want a blue white thing are are going to take advantage of it, and it gains you life versus losing your life. I think there's potential here. It also like gets to a. Uh, What's the delve spell that is its dig ultimate? It gets to a dig through time pretty quickly. Like, if you have a Lingering Souls in it's play... It's even better than dig through time, because it's ten cards and three of them, as yeah. opposed to seven well, and it's, two. It's a Planeswalker ultimate. Well, right, but I mean, okay, so, like, let's, again... We, the best way to look at a Planeswalker always is, what are you getting in the, in the initial minus, right? That's, like, that's the thing. So, if it's... If, did, you, did you literally just say this? No, I but I, I don't know if I agree with your sentence, but sure. I think the, the main thing to look at a Planeswalker is not to look at its ultimate. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I said not the ultimate. I said what you're, what you're getting in the minus, in sure. the initial minus. So what is it, the spell version? So the spell version of this is blue-white one. You're getting a 1-1 one, one flying artifact token and gaining one life, which is a bad rate, but it's a fine rate because it protects Dobbin. Right. And if you're playing this in conjunction with other tokens, which in theory will be in play to also protect him, mm -hmm. it's possible you could ultimate this card on turn four. Like, it's not that hard that that would happen. Because you could plus it on turn three with enough tokens in play, probably off of some clever type of combo thing. I don't think you can ultimate this on turn four easily. I think you could, but you would need a token on turn one and then multiple, like, I don't know what you can, how to get more than two tokens on turn two, like um, without. So yeah. we just got an alert on our thing that I have to ask Michael, our producer, to help us out with. Um, can you just move the light? to the side of the Mevo. It's overheating. I think it's because the light's too close to it. Oh, yeah. I uh, can... Okay. Just yeah. back it up. I would just back it up and move it to the right. So, so it's... Yeah, exactly. Our light's going to change a little bit, but yeah, I would try to get it to the... I would try to get it fully to the right of the camera so it's not experiencing the heat at all. Yeah, I think that's fine. Perfect. Thank you. Cool. All right. Even, um, the, even the camera knows it's too hot today. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I think just creating... I, I think the... I think this card has potential. I don't think it's, like, insane. I think it's really good in standard. I think in this format it just has potential, and I think people are underrating it in general. Yeah, I think it's, I mean, I think it's good. It's going to be... It, it, oh, I just changed our angle. It will be very hard for us to properly uh, get that thing to ultimate on turn four, but I do think it's possible. Like, I, think there's, there's, I don't even think versions. that's... Like, I think the best scenario of this is just, like, you play it, you minus, you minus, you then plus, you then minus, you minus, you then plus. Like, I don't think even working towards the ultimate is the main gale player. I think just, like, getting a better blossom online that gives you life versus losing a life is... Fine. Yeah, I think it's cool. Um, Electro Dominance. This card. Is red, red, X. Instant Electro Dominance does X damage to any target. You may cast a card with converted mana cost X or less from your hand without paying its mana cost. Um, there's infinite uses for this card. I mean, just just imagine, just imagine, you're playing a very basic blue red counter burn deck. Okay, not even one that has like, not even one that's like playing Arc Lake Phoenix or anything that clever. Just like literally blue red counter spells and burn. Your ability to on turn two, end of turn, red, red, to draw three off an Ancestral Vision and just cycle through your deck, it, like... It's really good. That's I mean, really good. Not to mention just, like, on turn four, being able to kill a creature for two and then counter a spell off of, like, or remand someone. Like, it, like, has Cryptic Command level, power level at that point. Like, I think this card is really good, and we're not even getting into the fact that this can count cast balance on turn two. Like, it has restore balance as a combo with it. <laughs> it's, ca it's cast any spell, right, that costs the X? Uh, cast a card with converted mana, cost X or less. So, correct me if I'm wrong here, couldn't you cast Mere Superior off an Electro Dominance? Yes. Or... Uh, no... Without, does it say without paying its mana cost? Or less from your hand. Yeah, it does say without paying mana cost. Okay. Mere Superior, instant speed, end of turn. Because oh, you can only use mana from creatures that pay its mana cost. Yes. Got it. Okay. Yeah, you can. I Epic. feel like that's that's the, like, <laughs> five, six, <laughs> or balance. Five, six, I mean, or I'm just, balance. I'm just saying. Five, know. six, or ancestral recoup. <laughs> Why not do them all? Play Scab Ruinator in the deck? Play them all. Yeah, you could do that. 
you could do that. <laughs> I can't wait to five mana end of turn three you and put All a right. Scott Runeter in play. Uh, I so see I, it coming. I think I am going to say, I think this episode, we have a bunch more cards we're going to go through, but based on how many cards we have left, uh, we're probably going to have this episode be a two-parter. Okay. Uh, I don't think we're going to be able to do, we're at almost an hour and uh, we have, we're not even halfway there. So, but that's fine. How many cards do we have left? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five. It's a lot of cards out of fifty. So hefty, hefty number of cards. Yeah. So that's cool. Emergency powers. Five white blue. Each player shuffles their hand and graveyard into their library, then draws seven cards. Exile emergency powers. If you cast the spell during your man phase, you might put a permanent card from with converted mana cost seven or less from your hand onto the battlefield. So if you play this on your main phase, it's a almost and you have a seven drop. It is a free <laughs> wheel. That is magical Christmas land, but... I mean, it's an instant. You can also play it at instant speed. Like, yeah. I think you could play one of these in a deck that just is a blue-white control deck. I... So, I'm going to admit something. We, we had this conversation in Hong Kong of, like, what's the type of card that you never really can wrap your head around of being good? Um, and I get it in Storm decks. Yeah. But if it's not Storm, I don't understand why a wheel would see play. Yeah, the, the conversation he's referencing is, like, I basically said to Alex... What's the card or the effect that you know is really powerful that everybody in every format wants to play and like is so excited to play that you whenever you draw it, you're like, I understand this is powerful, but it doesn't excite me. It feels annoying to have to do this. Yeah, time like, twister is that effect for me. Yeah, for me it's weirdly enough, Umazawa's Jute. Something <laughs> something about the fact that it costs two and two to equip. Maybe it's just because it just kills every creature I've ever loved. I'm not sure. Yeah, I feel we, we talked about this on that conversation as well. I feel like your problem with GTA is more of a huge hatred of the card from it being across from you than actually the quality of the card. It's really good. It's just like I love playing like X1 Flyers mm -hmm. and it just kills them all. So. I just, I've played a lot of formats and like I understand the way to break the fact that you're drawing seven cards. Like I understand how that works, but it's like so many hoops to jump through and none of these have ever been good in modern. Hmm. The fact that you can cast a 7 drop for free, though, is cool. I veto this card. It's bad. Okay. <laughs> Final payment. Black, white. As an additional cost to cast this creature spell, pay 5 life, or sacrifice a creature, or enchantment, destroy target creature. Um, I mean, it has, the, it has the sacrifice hatching plans effect attached to it, which is exciting. E, the, yeah, it's... At worst, it's destroy a creature for 2 that you, like, lose 5 life, which is pretty rough. But at best, you're taking advantage of the ability to sack a creature, which I think a lot of decks want. Uh, yeah. I mean, that's where I'm at on it. There's a few cards that I can think of that really want you to be able to sack a creature in modern, but I would say historically the most powerful ones are actually not modern cards. Like Academy Rector is one of the famous ones, and that's not in modern. Well, but I mean, like, Aristocrats has been tried to be made a lot of times, and those normally have effects when you sacrifice a creature, you gain a bonus of some variety. And playing like a Terminate in those style decks is always has the weird feel bad of like this card isn't as good at not helping my plan, other than the fact that it's just a removal spell. Repeatable sack outlets are different, but Correct. one time sack outlets, they're hard to get behind. Yeah, I agree. Uh, this guy, to, speaking of repeatable sack outlets, Fireblade Artist, Black Red, Human Shaman, Haste 2 2. At the beginning of your upkeep, you may sacrifice a creature. When you do, Fireblade Artist deals two damage to target opponent or Planeswalker. Um, this one's pretty interesting. I think a 2-2 haste that has, like, an ability to just in the long run, especially if the board gets stalled, start, like, just killing a person. I, he has a lot of utility. And in Aristocrat's style deck, he's also just, like, really good. I, I, there, if this card read, do... Yeah, I think I think this is a card that people might be sleeping on a little bit. I think it has enough versatility attached to it that it's worth considering for aristocrat style decks. What is the card Lizolda Blood Witch? Is that the red black one from like Dissension or something? Is it like a pinger that you can sack a creature? No, to... it's the one that whenever you um, let's see if I can just find it really quick. It's the one that whenever you sacrifice a creature, if it's like black and red or something, um, I can't find it. Michael probably knows what I'm talking about. What is it, like Liz Volda Blood Witch or something? Liz Volda Blood Witch, you pay two, sacrifice a creature. If it was red, you shock something. If it was black, you draw a So it's possible I'll there was like... My head, though, yeah, that's pretty much... It's, it's, like, it's, like, it's like a 3-1 for 3 in red that you can pay two to sacrifice a creature. You get like a, a 
draw a card and like a burn bonus for each of the colors that it is. Okay. If it's black or if it's red. It kind of reminds me of this card and there's like maybe an interesting interplay between the two because you can sacrifice this to her if you wanted another bonus. Yeah, the difference between those two though is like that is a, you have to pay for that cost. It doesn't have, like it's not aggressive. This is an aggressive card. Like this you play it and you get in for two. Like that's like on its, like haste is an ability that is meant to be paid attention to, especially yeah. on inefficient, uh, inexpensive things. And then the sacking is free. Like playing a blood gas and then like into this is like great, or playing this and then playing blood gas on your next turn and just keep looping them so that like one of the problems with blood gas in general or aristocrat decks can have is that you like do a bunch of damage when you're aggressive and then you stall out when they put a creature in front of you. This lets you get around that creature. It fixes a lot of the problems that aggressive decks have. I think this card is 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 pretty dope. I think like blood witch. The issue is it's a three drop, which is problematic. We've talked a long time about how three drops are really hard to be good and it. On top of that is has an activated cost where this is just a free sack outlet that it's not repeatable. You don't get to choose when it happens, but every turn you just get the sack a thing to do damage to them. And it's then aggressive to begin with. So you can get damage into them to make it so that when you start sacking creatures to it, their life total is already low enough that it becomes a threat. Um, Frilled Mystic. Green, green, blue, blue. Elf, lizard, wizard. Love it. Uh, Flash, when Frilled Mystic enters the battlefield, you may counter target spell. It's a 3-2. So it's almost strictly better Mystic Snake. It's just a slightly more restrictive casting cost. You have, yeah, you need one gr extra green versus a colorless. So it's, yeah, it's green, green, blue, blue. I don't see a deck that's going to play this. However, it is an elf, which is interesting. Always interesting to pay attention to. Yeah, it has two very relevant creature types. And one of the principal problems with Mystic Snake is, like, Snake is not a relevant creature type. Yeah. Um, it is... A better beater, like a 2-2 for four flash is not as good as a 3-2 for, obviously. <laughs> um, and the converted mana cost issue, I think, is less of an issue in modern where you just, like, have fetch lands to be able to get around it. Um, it's interesting. It's something that's more interesting than, than... When I read it, I was like, oh, this is a thing that I would think about. Yeah, yeah. it's cool. Um, if I were to play a Salt Tide deck, this is a card I would actually for sure consider. It's hard, though, in a three-color deck to hit blue, blue, green, green. If you have to, if you have to hit a third color. I mean, sure. you're going to end up playing, like fetches and shocks and stuff but it's still just it's it is very restrictive so these creatures are incredible okay yep yeah yep uh glass of the guild pack two mana artifact multi-clear creatures you control get plus one plus one i mean this is fun because it's a because it's a colorless anthem mm -hmm. that you can play a deck that is almost an exclusively multicolor creatures it's a two mana lord all two mana lords have yeah. been considered for play at some point including the illusion one that has no support beyond it itself Unfortunately, I guess the vampire ones don't ever see play. <laughs> Non-creature two mana lords are harder though, because sure. like Crusade is legal in modern, right? Or or no no no, sorry, sorry. Nope, bad, bad, not. bad Moon's the one that's legal because it's because it Bad Moon is significantly worse than Honor of the Pure. Honor of the Pure, yeah, yeah and you can play those cards. Yeah, that's yeah, fine. Yeah, but that's white creatures. They're better multicolor creatures. I mean, I'm not yeah, saying yeah. it's bad. I'm just saying it's not a creature, which right. is what makes it worse than Lord of Atlantis. Uh, goblin Gathering. Two red sorcery. Create a one, number of 1-1 one, one red goblin creature tokens equal to 2 plus the number of creature cards named Goblin Gathering in your graveyard. Ah, the old uh, Muscle Burst yeah. effect. Right? I love Muscle Burst effects. Yeah. Like, every time a card is printed with that effect on it, I'm, like, happy. I don't know if this is good. Three mana for two one ones is bad. Three mana for... Five one ones is good. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this seems hard to imagine this card being good. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of token makers that are sweet. Right, it's not one of them. Yeah. Um, next card, growth spiral, Ooh, blue exactly. and a green instant draw card. You may put a land card from your hand onto the battlefield. I like this card a lot. Yeah, I think this card's powerful. Um, I think the fact that it's an end of turn card in a blue deck that's going to speed you up and mm -hmm. get you ahead, that's going to replace itself. Um, is this... it? What's the? What's the? There's the one. There's one that's all like a ton of play. Explore? Uh, explore. Yeah, right? this, is, this is this is just explore, but instant speed. Yeah, well, the difference is explore is you may play an additional land. This just puts a land this in the turn play. and draw a card. Mm -hmm. Sorcery for green and one, and this is blue green instant speed. You may put a land from your hand onto the battlefield, and the reason it's the, the wording difference is purely just from a, you, in, you, an instant version of Explore can't just say you play a land. You can't play a land on your opponent's turn. It's no, illegal. but you're also missing the other part, which is that you draw, you draw card the first. card first. Do you do that with, with Explore? Yeah, you do. It says you may play an additional land this turn, draw a card. Yeah, yeah. but you, like... Oh, you're right. It doesn't make a difference. Doesn't make a difference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a solid, solid point. <laughs> I'll, 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 I'm wrong on that one. <laughs> I mean, it might not say it first, but the point is it doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, but, it, like, so it's the exact same card, but instant speed, I think that's a totally playable card. I yeah. I think I'm interested in it. I'm into it. Um, How many cards left in today's version? Uh, we have one, two, three. Got it. 
Growth Chamber Guardian, green and a colorless. Elf Crab Warrior, adapt two for three. Whenever one or more plus one plus one counters are put on Growth Chamber Guardian, you may search your library for a card named Growth Chamber Guardian. <sighs> Reveal it, put it into your hand, and then shuffle your library. It's an Elf Crab Warrior 2-2 two, two. for two. I really like this card. I'm a big fan of this card. This is one of the cards in the set that I'm the most excited about. Um, the fact that it's just a bear on its own, just to begin with, um, is always fine. Like, it's that's a good... It's not a 1-1 one, one for two. Mm -hmm. So you're getting, like, a rate that's like, okay, as long as this has a cool effect. And then the fact that when one or more plus one plus counters are put on it, that's what causes you to search, means that if you're playing this in a deck, like let's just say you play this alongside graft cards, which are just like, I'm not saying you would, but like, let's say you played the green dra graft land even, though it comes into play tapped and has a counter on it. On turn two, you play this, it gets the land off of your, the, the counter off your graft land, right? And but for those of you who don't remember, it's a tapped green source that has one counter on it. When a creature enters the battlefield, you can move that counter from the land onto the creature. This comes down now as a 3-3 on turn two that automatically searches your deck for another copy. If you're playing this alongside any of the graph creatures, which are all fine, like there's a couple that are actually pretty decent. The frog is the best one, right? Plaxcaster Frogling. Yeah. But I mean, there's a 1-1, one, one, there's a 2-2. Two, two. Okay. Like the Aquastrand Spider, you can move counters around at the beginning of upkeeps, I think. Or no, no, uh, Scrounging Bandar, you could play this alongside and then you can move counters back and forth each upkeep just to put a counter on this and just keep searching every turn. I don't like, know what that card is, but I'm assuming it does what you just said. It's a common from a Kaladesh <laughs> or something like that. Okay. There's just a lot of things that manipulate counters that this card to me feels like Squadron Hawk, but not a 1-1 flyer. So that's my, my, my main question here is, is this ever going to really be better than Squadron Hawk? And I think you made it a case for it. The fact that it's an elf actually is what is most interesting to me on that, on that factor. It does have a much more relevant creature type. Um, plus it's a crab. Crab tribal guys, hedge and crab into this. You can't beat it. And it has adapt too. <laughs> like, we're, space. <laughs> we're like we're like not acknowledging adapt too. Like adapt two means that on turn three, if nothing else, you can just turn it into a four four and that search for another one. Yeah, that's really good. <laughs> yeah, this will be a standard card for sure. Oh yeah, standard. I think they know it's a card. That's why this card's in every. It's in the trailer. Like yeah. every card, I think they know is good is in the trailer, or it's like a mythic rare that's like Rakdos that's in the trailer because he's a main character. But yeah. Um, moving on, uh, Gruel Spellbreaker, one red green uh, ogre warrior. It has Riot. This creature enters the battlefield uh, with your choice of a plus one plus one counter or haste. Trample as long as it's your turn. Gruel Spellbreaker. Uh, you and Gruel Spellbreaker have hexproof. Um, this is a big fu to. Uh, um, the white wrath that if you're attacking, you get lands. The like path to all attacking oh, creatures. Oh, settle the wreckage. Settle the wreckage. Yeah. Uh, big. I mean, that's why this card was printed. I think even Wizards has said publicly that the reason this card has the ability to give you hexproof on your turn is because settle the wreckage is a card in standard. Um, I like this card a lot. I, I saw. I mean, I don't think this card is like super super powerful. I think it's pretty good. It's yeah. above average rate. I like it. Like a three, like a four four for three, or a three three haste for three, with like that that hexproof ability are both pretty strong. Right. Um, Agreed. They're both pretty cool. So, um, and we have one more card for today. This is the last card. Gutter Bones, one black, two one, Skeleton Warrior, enters the battlefield tapped. You may pay one and a black to return it from your graveyard to your hand. You can only act its ability your turn if your opponent has lost life. It's another in the long line of Bloodsoak Champions and Grave Crawlers and cards. Two ones for one that you're able to get back with some ability. They right. seem to be very willing to print. This is the, this one seems underpowered compared to some of the other ones. Sure. Uh, I think I think Yeah, I agree. Going to your hand is interesting because it like lets you buy Vengevines back a little bit better than going to Battlefield. Like, yeah. That's one thing that is like relevant, but otherwise I agree with you. It's a warrior. There's enough cool warriors being printed that I yeah, think... Yeah, warrior tribal. They're two mana warrior lords. Yeah, there's a, there's the plus one plus O oh and the plus O oh plus one yeah. ones. The, the chief of the edge and chief of the scale, I think are what they're called. And yep. uh, they're interesting. I've thought about that for a while. Like, is there going to eventually be some sort of warrior deck? But uh, yeah, Gutter Bones is fine. It's, I mean, it's a two one warrior for two, for one. Yep. So... Um, All right, that's that's the first half. That's going to wrap us up for part one. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow with part two of our set review. Not tomorrow. Uh, well, next, next week, week we have a different show, so probably we're going to do it this week because otherwise we're just going to miss we'll the set. We'll figure that out. I would not announce it now on the live <laughs> stream of when this is coming out. We'll figure yes. it out. Uh, but Sometime in the next seven days, this second part will come out. Uh, thank you guys. for Thank you, live stream, for being on. Sorry, I just hit the table. Um, Big shout out to our sister podcast. Big shout out to our Twitter. You make sure to follow us. I'm at Cass Wiley. He's at Ben Bateman Media. Yep. We are at the MMCast. We have a Facebook group. We have a Patreon. The Patreon is how we 
continue to try and make this podcast trudge along. So we are extraordinarily appreciative of all the help you guys do. Keeps this podcast alive. Um, and yeah. Yeah, be sure to check out the Twitter, at the MMGAS, Kessel Alley, Ben Baby Media, if you just say that right now. Yeah, I said all that. Oh, I literally zoned yeah, out. Yeah, you zoned out, but you're doing yeah. my thing. Yeah. You can see you have the computer in front of you. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. a computer is an ADD it's machine. It's distracting. Yeah. Um, all right. Thanks, everyone. Make sure to subscribe on YouTube. Every time we do our episode, we put it on the YouTube channel as a live stream, and you get to watch with us. Yeah. Thanks cool. for watching, guys. We'll be back with part two. Bye. Bye, everybody. Uh...